normally when you talk about the brand of a central vacuum, you're talking about the brand of the equipment. You know, like these are Filtex units over here and oh, what else? This is an old vacuum flow. But in the modern world of retractable hose central vacs, oftentimes we refer to the brand of the system as being the brand of the retractable hose uh, being in the United States, either Hide a Hose or Chameleon. And in Canada, they have another one called the Retroflex. But in fact, the piping system is the same, the same kind of elbows installed with the same principle. The differences between those brands are to do with the valve itself, which is the termination point of the piping system. And the valve has to do three things. The first is to activate the system. The second is to lock the hose. And the third is to seal the opening when that valve is not in use so that there's suction throughout the rest of the system. Let's start with hide a hose. This is an HS5000. It's the current model hide a hose that's been out for, oh, more than a few years now. Probably close to 10 at this point. And this is installed in the wall. In fact, the part that goes in the wall in the rough end stage is just a frame. This frame here you put in and uh, you slide this pipe connector between these forks and you pipe off of here, either downward or upward. And then on the trim, uh, you take and you put the valve body in. And this is the door, but it's also the guts. It's the lock, the switch, the gasket, everything. Uh, for a retrofit, you would take these flanges off the sides and you would just kind of shoehorn this frame into the wall and then assemble this, make your wire connections, and feed your pipe in from below or from above. The thing that makes the hide -a hose a hide -a hose is the way this locks the hose. This rubber squeezy bit here, to use the technical term, uh, squishes around the hose, and whether it's a socked hose or not a socked hose, it keeps that hose in that position and provides something of a seal. Um, now, it's not a perfect seal because there is a spiral leakage path around the spirals of the hose, but it is pretty good. And it's the same locking mechanism whether you're at the end of the hose or part way down the hose. So when you go to use this thing, you pull the hose out, you lock it, you turn the system on, you do your vacuuming, and when you're finished, you unlock, keeping the system running, and putting your hand over the end of the hose will cause the suction to draw the hose back into the piping. And then when you finish, you shut the door. Shutting the door pushes on the switch, and the system will be off. You'll notice that there's a gasket on the door here. So this box needs to be air sealed for there to be no leakage elsewhere in the system. So that's that. That's hide a hose. Let's look now at Chameleon. The Chameleon is kind of opposite in a lot of ways. The basic concept is the same. Uh, you have the valve box with the guts is what puts it, uh, is what you put in during the rough in. And you either screw one of these flanges onto a stud or you break them off for retrofit. Uh, on the Chameleon, you do not need to seal the door. You'll notice there's no gasket on the door. In fact, there doesn't even need to be a door because on the chameleon, it's the hose end sitting between this O-ring and this rubber ball that seals the system off <clears throat> when this valve is not in use. Uh, to extend, to uh, use the system, you would grab the hose, pull it out. If you pull it to the very end, then it is self-locking. What happens is the end of the hose engages with these little pins in here that are now made of durable plastic. They used to be stainless steel. So it self-locks and self-seals. It's a very good seal. Um, but that's only at the end of the hose. So with a chameleon, when you want to vacuum with the hose partway out, most of the time on current valves, you just take the little clip, pull it out, and you can, you can stick that clip in and it will hold the hose. It doesn't seal it, but it holds the hose from going back in. There is a prototype now where that little same hose holder is integrated and you just pull it out. 
So that's your partway hose lock. To activate the system on a chameleon, the switch is back here. So you would turn it on and that switch could be a little more visible, but once you know where it is, it's fine. You do your vacuuming, You t when you're finished, you take the end of the hose and you give it a little twist and that disengages the end of the hose from those pins in here, allows the hose to be drawn back into the piping. And then when you're at the end, you just push it and it turns the switch off. So the end of the hose actually bumps that switch into the off position and then you close your door. So the rough in is just the box. The finish is, uh, the rough in is the box rather with the guts. The finish is just the door. And so hide a hose, cheaper to rough in, more expensive to finish. Chameleon, more expensive to rough in, cheaper to finish. And a lot of people think that it's the securing of the valve box to the stud that makes it really secure. Uh, in fact, it is on, on any of these and in a standard central vacuum. It's the sandwiching of the box behind the drywall and the door in front of the drywall that actually provides the stability, not the attachment to the stud. All this does is get it in the right spot so that you can pipe off of it and so the drywallers can cut around it in the right spot. So that's Chameleon. The Retroflex, which is not sold in the USA at this time, but through a secret special source, I have acquired one. Uh, you rough in the box with the guts and then you finish it with just the door. So it's kind of chameleon-like in that way. You do have the nailing flanges that you can break off to retrofit it. Uh, the door is a nice convex design. It opens like that. Obviously, when there's drywall, it's not going to go back like that. It's just going to sit up against the wall. Uh, I kind of like the hose lock mechanism. So it's, it's high to hose-ish, which is probably why it can't be sold in the USA because of patents, in that it squeezes on a rubber squeezy part and when you release it then it expands open and the hose can retract but one thing i like about the retroflex is how they've integrated the switch into this design so when you start to vacuum you pull the hose out you lock it and that also pulls this red tab out turning the system on this is your switch then you vacuum and when you're done you unlock and remember, you keep the system running to retract the hose. And then closing the door pushes that switch back in, and now it's off. So it's, I would say, the most intuitive of the designs. I can't speak to the durability, the longevity. I will say that in general, the chameleon locking pins seem to be more uh, long-lived than the little rubber squeezy part of Hide a Hose or of this. Uh, and the valve itself, like this seems to be of higher quality, and so does this, than this. But who knows uh, how long it actually holds up. Hide a hose has been around longer than these, so it has the track record. Socked versus not socked hoses. Uh, the original purpose of a hose sock was to protect your woodwork, your furniture, from the corrugations of the hose rubbing the paint off. But in a retractable hose, that sock makes the hose easier to retract, but it also makes it a little harder to pull out. So, oh no, I've got that wrong. The hose sock makes it easier to pull out, a little harder to retract. Um, and because the hose and the sock expand and contract at different rates, that's really the source of that. And in fact, uh, on older retractable hose systems, you'll see the sock is bunched up at the handle end of the hose and it's real tight towards the other end. And that makes the other end very stiff and very difficult to move through and around the bends. So if you ever have a problem system uh, with too many elbows or too much up and down in the piping, a non-socked hose will often work well. In general, the retractable hose system is much pickier with its installation than a standard system. A standard central vac, as long as your power unit is well-sized and you're adhering to the principles of installation, you can put in more elbows, you can have the pipe go up and down and back up, and it doesn't matter, it works just fine. With the retractable hoses, what we've learned is that piping really needs to be all on the same plane. 
either above the valve running through the attic or the basement ceiling if it's a basement valve or below the valve on the first floor your piping runs through the basement or the crawl space but all on the same plane you don't want it to go up a little and down a little unless you have to sometimes you have to uh, in chicagoland a lot of our basements are finished right off the bat they build soffits around the piping and that means that pipe can run in the joist and then it dips below the joist you use a 22 and a half degree elbow and that's to be avoided but when you can't you can't these retractable fittings you can see they're really big they remind you of like the fittings at the bank where the the cylinder with your deposit sucks through those lines. That's kind of what's going on here. The hose is traveling through. And you have 90s, you have 45s, and you have 22s. And if you compare the retractable 90 to a standard central vac 90 or to a short radius 90, you can see what a difference there is. There needs to be room for these. And same thing, retractable 45, regular 45. The piping being what actually contains the hose of the of retractable system. So if you're using a 40 or a 50 foot hose, that means you need to run 40 plus or 50 plus feet of piping with as few elbows as possible. Ideally, you would just 90 down through the floor or up through the attic and run a straight shot. But it's kind of hard to get 50 feet of pipe straight in. So you have to put some elbows in, just like electrical conduit. You want a maximum of four, ideally, 360 degrees, all on the same plane. And like I said, these systems are pickier, so you need every... Uh, tubing cut to be straight and square. You don't want any burrs at all. You want to be very diligent about deburring and about gluing the tube all the way into each fitting. Uh, that prevents clogging. It also provides the smoothest path for the hose to travel through without getting hung up. And then at the end, after you've run your hose length plus a safety factor worth of pipe, and usually I do that by just counting the sticks of pipe, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. Usually I use six sticks of pipe um, for a 40 foot and seven sticks of pipe for a 50 foot. Then you insert your hose stop fitting. And all this is is a reducer coupling. Different designs for each brand. This is the Chameleon. This is the Hida hose. This is Retroflex. But all this is doing is providing a place where the hose end can't get past it because that hose will stretch a little bit with age and if you've got a 40 foot hose and like 41 feet of piping then at some point that hose will stretch enough that it'll start to hit this fitting and if this fitting wasn't here it would either go past a t-junction and block off a different part of the system or it would get jammed in an elbow here and neither one of those is a good thing um another thing to touch on when because when after your raceway, you transition to standard fittings. After that, it becomes a regular central vacuum, and you're just going point A to point B, easiest path back to the central vacuum power unit. But one big difference between a standard system and a retractable, in a standard central vacuum where you take the hose and you plug it in, a traditional system, the first elbow inside the wall is a short radius 90-degree elbow. That's not only so that it can fit in the 2x4 wall, it's also so that... If you had something long that you got sucked up, it wouldn't go past here. And anything that did go past here, the shortest turn in the system would go all the way through the longer turns. So short turn first, longer turns down the line. A retractable system by necessity is installed in the exact opposite way. Long turns first to hold those, shorter turns down the line. So somebody sucking up a pencil, that pencil will travel all the way through. And you know where that's going to get caught? Right here. So that's not great. Uh, it only becomes a problem if people, I, I would say, abuse the system. You know with your vacuum cleaner not to suck up pens and pencils. But some people just could tear up an anvil, as they say. So two safeguards against that. First is to use the hose handle. Don't use just the bare end of the hose, even though I sometimes do, and I like that because it's small and compact. But the handle provides an obstruction stop where a small, long object won't go through there. The second thing is when it's being installed, your standard junction between one line and another line is a sweep T fitting, directional. Well, a sweep T actually 
won't pass that. It'll get hung up right here. And in fact, we cut this out because this exact thing happened to this. But if you use a Y fitting, you can see with a 45 on there, we've made that into a sweep T. But that same object will pass through. So I like my Y fittings for that reason. Um, that's about all I can think of. So just uh, be more diligent. These systems are pickier to install than your standard system. They are more sensitive to a perfect or ideal installation. But the reward is much greater convenience through the life of your system. Uh, the choice is yours. Brand-wise, we are installing both Chameleon and Hydahose. We support both products, and we think the choice should be yours. Uh, we install and service systems all over Chicagoland. Please get in contact with us in the description below. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy vacuuming.